This video is entitled Process Lifecycle Phases and is part of the Project Management for Technology course, Chapter 1. My name is Dr. Renault at Shawnee State University, and I'll be taking you through this uh, brief video into the five uh, lifecycle phases. As I said in the last slide, this video is going to cover the five phases of the process lifecycle, and they are discovery, initiating, planning, executing, and closing. So I'm going to start by just kind of describing what these process groups are. There are five big processes that each project goes through as we, as we work on a project. And remember our definition of a project from earlier, a temporary endeavor to do something. These are also sometimes called phases. Each of these process groups has inputs, things that go into the process group. Uh, processes within the process group. Notice it's not called a process, it's called a group of processes. There are tools and techniques that are used, very uh, varying tools and techniques that are used in each of these process groups. And then each group has an output or group of documents or processes that it creates that move on into the next process group until we finally wrap it up with the closing process. When you're talking about processes, you'll often see a diagram like the diagram above, which is called a waterfall diagram, where phase one discovery falls into, or waterfalls, or moves into initiating, into planning, into executing, and closing. But um, this, uh, when you actually in real practice start doing project management, sometimes you'll be in the initiating phase or even in the planning phase and find that you didn't have a full understanding and may have to step back into a previous phase or work on a document from a previous phase. So these phases aren't finished. It's not like you can say, well, this is done. We're not going back to that. Sometimes you do have to go back and review. So there could be arrows from planning back to initiating, initiating back to discovery that weren't included just to keep this document uh, simple. So here in chapters one and two, we're going to talk a lot about this discovery phase, and mostly in chapter one. The thing we have to ask ourselves, well, we've got a project. Somebody's brought us a project. Uh, we're talking about maybe doing a project. The project's not set in stone yet. But uh, we have to ask ourselves some simple questions. Is the project worthwhile? Does it make sense to spend the time and money to do the project? Um, and what are the high-level cost estimates? What is a high-level budget? How long is it going to take? Also, we probably should look at calculating the net present value uh, over, the, over the time so that we can compare alternatives more, more equally. Maybe look at payback, um, cash flow, and, and other kinds of concepts as we're discovering the project. We've not yet um, really jumped into to creating the project, but we're, we're trying to decide, are we even going to do it? The next phase is the initiating phase, and this is the time where we, okay, we have justification, it makes sense we're going to do this project, let's initiate the project. Here at this point, what we're going to develop is a project charter, uh, a description of what the project is, what we're going to do, a high-level scope design of what's in and what's out of the project, kind of how big is it going to be, what's one of the main features. We're not going to get into the nitty-gritty yet of, of, the, of the scope document, but we are going to, to really put a fence around the project and say, this is the project. We need to create our RACI, our a responsible, uh, uh, accountable, um, communicated, informed, uh, our, our RACI chart of who is responsible for, for, for the project. Who are we going to communicate with? Who's going to get involved? Who are the stakeholders of the project? And then we usually, at, at this initiating phase, have our big first project kickoff meeting. So now that we've 
decided we're going to do the project with Discovery. We've initiated the project to get it rolling. We've figured out our stakeholders. It's now time for us to really plan what we're going to do. This is where we create our, our schedules, our work breakdown structures of getting into the details of the nitty gritty of, of the bits and pieces. We're going to need to figure out what resources need assigned, what kind of contractors we need to hire. We need to figure out our, our risks. And, and this time we do a detailed risk analysis. And remember, risks can be good and bad, and we'll talk about risks in a, in a later video. We need to figure out what our quality assurance is going to look like. We need to design and define our communication plan and how we're going to communicate the project to our stakeholders. We're going to need to create a procurement plan that, that talks about the steps we're going to go through to either procure items or people or contractors. We're going to need to have our change management plan, and we're going to need a detailed budget. So there's a lot of planning that needs to go on at this point before we actually start building the, the, the whatever the project happens to be. So now that we've done our, our planning, we can start executing, actually doing it. Following the project management plan, working with the team, doing our QA, communicating, managing vendors, um, all of those things that you have to do when you're actually building the system or the building or whatever the project entails. Uh, I think Heldman kind of says it very well when, when the author says, at this point, we're producing and verifying our deliverables, actually getting it done. Also remember that while we're executing, while our teams are off doing their things and our, our subject matter experts are building what we're paying them to build, the project management office, the project managers involved in the projects are always looking at risks, trying to take advantage of risks, trying to avoid risks, trying to manage risks. We're looking at issues, we're looking at performance, we're dealing with changes and change orders, and we're always keeping an eye on the budget, both time and money of, of the project as we're going through this executing phase. So, remember that we said in our first video, or in, in the first part of chapter one, that a project is a temporary endeavor to do something, which means that we're going to end. Project comes to a stop. Um, so we have to close the project. The, uh, and, and this is a, an important thing that a lot of projects don't do, but it's, it's, a, it's a big thing, and we'll talk about it. We have a whole chapter on it later in, in, the, uh, in the term. But um, what we have to do is we have to pass the project on to its final customer. If we're building a building, we pass the, the building over to the customer and they move in and then they start living in the building, uh, doing maintenance and all of those kinds of things. Or if it's a piece of software, we, we do our training, we do the documentation, and we have the, the customer start actually operating. Now, during this closing phase, one of the things that we as project managers and, and anybody involved in a project needs to do is look at the lessons learned as we executed and controlled the project, what, what things worked well, and also what things didn't work well, so that we know what to do or what not to do in our, in our next project, because there's always another project. One of the things we also have to do, or a couple of things we have to do, is release our resources. If we've had programmers from other departments, or we've had engineers from other departments, or we've had employees from other, other areas come in to work for us during this project, we need to release them back to we need to release them back to their home departments. Or if we're a projectized kind of organization, we need to release the employees so they can be assigned to their next project. 
we have to close our contracts if we have consultants or or other contracts, service contracts, leases, those types of things. We've got to close all of those off. But the most important thing that you have to have at the closing of a project is you need the signature of your sponsor. You need to have a sign-off from the biggie wig, from the person in charge, saying, yes, the project is done, congratulations, you're finished. <laughs> that way you can disseminate that to all of the individuals. That way you're free to go on to the next project. So with a closing, remember that a project is a temporary endeavor. So when the temporary endeavor is done, we need to go through some closing processes to wrap it all up and document the good and the bad with that project. The quotation in a previous slide and the general concept of this uh, came from Kim Heldman's CompTIA Project Plus Study Guide, PK0005, second, ed uh, second edition, or I forget what edition this is. This could be the third edition, actually. John Wiley, um, here's the book, by the way, that, uh, yeah, there we go. So uh, thank you and very to much. to conclude, I'd like to say thank you. Remember, this presentation is copyright 2020. 23 by me, James M. Renault, PhD. You can contact me at jreno at shawnee.edu. This work is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution, non-commercial share like 4.0 international license. And I'd like to say thank you, and I'll see you again in future videos.